Alrighty, so if you want to go ahead and start to replace your gauge cluster lights, it's actually a pretty simple and easy process. So to pull this piece off, it literally just pulls off. Just give it a good tug. And um, try to, if you can, get your hands or your fingers behind the, um, the little, whatever these little things are called, these little quick connects here, because uh, it's very easy to bend one of these little um, pieces and they can snap off pretty easily, especially as the plastic gets old. It, it can easily snap off. Just throw that out the way. And as you can see here, now we can grab this piece and pull, but before we just start pulling this off, we have a little bolt here and a little bolt right over here, okay? That's where the seven millimeter is gonna come in, all right? We just take those out and then right here we have to remove this piece of plastic here and unscrew this piece of plastic and that's where one of these little tools are going to come in handy okay so first things first let's just undo the bolts right in there all right i just went ahead and took out the little bolts or screws and now we have to get this piece over here. So to get this piece out, what you're going to need to do is first pull it out. And here, let me shut this. Oh, that way I won't have to listen to that beeping. All right, once you pull that piece out, your ba if you look down right here, you can see how there's that cutout, okay? There's a little piece of metal right behind this cutout that sits in a groove that keeps this little pl plastic piece connected. To this piece of metal. What you're basically going to have to do is pry up that piece of metal so that this pulls right off. It'll easily pull off, all right? If you are tugging and tugging and it's not coming off, then you haven't properly pried up that piece of metal, okay? If you rip this thing off, you're just going to ruin it. you got to get that piece of metal pried up. So I'm going to take it off. I'm going to need two hands to do that, so I, unfortunately I cannot record that process. I'm going to take it off, and then I'm going to show you how it looks inside, and you should be able to better understand how to remove that piece. Alrighty. Went ahead and got the piece out, and as you can see, there's the little cutout, and there's the piece of metal. You're basically hooking that piece of metal and pulling it up or towards you and then it'll release right from this piece you can see how there's a uh, little grooves in the metal when you pull that little piece of metal up it lifts out of these grooves and the piece slides right off okay again if it's not coming off don't pull harder you haven't got the metal up yet and you just need to work on it more once you uh, do get this piece off we'll just set that to the side and then it's just unscrewing this little piece here, I'm going to turn back off the lights. This little piece just comes off just like that. When you pull on this plastic, it's, it's going to pop right out. So what you're going to do is just work your um, hand around here and just start popping the plastic. you got to pull pretty hard. Uh, don't, don't yank it too hard towards you though because, let's move the steering wheel down. There we go. Don't pull it too hard towards you because you don't want to necessarily crack the plastic. You're just looking to pop it off. So be gentle but firm. And if it doesn't go, try to start working at the bottom. It'll pop out. Um, it's just using quick connects. And obviously when plastic gets old, it's, um, it's going to be brittle. And it's going to be pretty easy for it to crack. And you obviously don't want that. All right, I've now pulled the plastic piece off, the radio, and you can see how the radio is still connected. So to get the radio off, there's basically a little metal pin that you're going to have to push in. It's going to be on both sides. There's a tool you can insert here uh, that will release it, but if you don't have that tool, you can just take your thumb, you push in that piece of metal, and the unit will slide right off of this plastic. Okay. Once I um, pop it off, I can show you better how that looks. Let me go ahead and show you. Um, let's just pull this out. You got your two electrical connections here, and then you got the one down below. These go to those 12 volt outlets. Uh, they're like most quick connects. You just pinch that little piece of plastic down and pull out. Um, you can, unfortunately, I cannot do this and hold the uh, camera very well at the same time. 
but you just uh, pinch this little piece of plastic down and pull it right out. All right, I went ahead and popped out the radio. So as I pull it out, you can see here, see this little metal piece, okay? All you gotta do is get your thumb, you push this piece in, and you gotta push pretty hard. That little metal does not wanna move, but you push it hard enough, and the radio just slides right out, all right? Now, once we have the radio out, we're gonna have to disconnect it. So once you remove it, um, you gotta unplug it back there. Before we do that, though, I wanna just try to completely remove this plastic piece and to do that easier without having to try to fight it around the steering column here, just put it in accessory mode, drop it in first gear, and then turn back off the key so we don't drain the battery. And now this is out of the way, and again, you drop the steering wheel down, you adjust it by just moving that in, pull it in, push it down. And this is as far down as it's going to go, but now we can move this plastic piece out of the way so much easier. Try to get some of my... Uh, tools out of the way here. Uh, we can pull the radio on out and with the radio this particular van has a lot more connections in it than most vans are and that's because this is the Traveler's Edition. So it has the rear entertainment system but that's neither really here nor there. It's pretty much the same concept. You just disconnect the wires back here by grabbing the harness little piece of plastic at the bottom, you push it in, you pull it out. Now this here, this is the uh, radio antenna, and that just pops right off. It, uh, you don't need to push anything in, this, you just tug it, it pops right out. We can just uh, set that down there. Don't let it get uh, buried away into the darkness, just leave it there. And then this, you just pull that out. And I'm going to need uh, probably two hands for this one as well. Alright, take that out. Put that off to the side. All right, now that we've got this piece moved out of the way, we got that one last connection in here. There we go. And this entire piece just literally pops right off, just like that. We'll just uh, put that behind us. This is the uh, unit that controls your uh, climate controls, and it's just held in with three screws. Again, everything so far seems to be a uh, seven millimeter, so. We're just going to go ahead and uh, take these out. All right, went ahead and took out those three screws. This pulls right on out. So when you're dealing with this piece here, you need to be careful because whenever you pull it out, you can see back here, here are the little um, wires going to your solenoid to control your... Um, like whether or not it's on AC or vent or floor defroster. There's the one bulb and that's gonna operate at both these switches here and your uh, temperature knob here. You can see that little black knob right there. Just twist that, pull it out. And you're gonna need to replace that bulb with a, you can use a 194, I believe it is, if I remember correctly, a 194, or maybe it's a 191, I can't quite remember. Uh, this is a 168. This is the brighter version of the standard bulb that Ford uses. Uh, it's exact same size, it's just ever so slightly brighter. And for me, I'd rather have the brighter one. Now, there's two different size bulbs that are used for the gauge cluster. You have one, these bulbs. And then the other little bulbs, like your turn signals, your engine lights, and the uh, peripheral around the speedometer are going to be the smaller ones. They're going to be 73s. I like using the 74s because the 74s are brighter. So if you want to make your speedometer and your instrument lights just a little bit brighter, you can use the little brighter bulbs. They're the exact same size. They still fit in, but they're just a little brighter. Now to get the gauge cluster bolts out, you're going to need to take your seven millimeter and you're going to need to put that extender on it. So once you have the extender, you'll be able to a lot more easily reach down in there and start ratcheting those out. And the bolts for the gauge cluster and the bolts for your climate control cluster thing there are the exact same type and length so if you put them all in one pile and mix them up you're good. Alrighty once you have all of the bolts out and there's only four two on top two on bottom 
you can just pull this right on and out. And before you completely pull it out though, we're just gonna start to pull the bottom out. And we're just gonna leave it just like this. The reason why is because your little um, gear shift indicator there, you have to disconnect that. It's gonna slide out of the instrument cluster. To do that, if we look down, see if you can see that. Got the little clips here, got one over here, and one on the other side. Take both fingers at the same time, push in the little plastic piece here, and gently pull it down, and it'll come right out. All right, once you've gone ahead and pulled out the little, um, whatchamacallit, you just can take this and work it on out. And you're still going to have all the wires attached to it. And just put it on its side like that, and now you can, uh, easily see all of your little bulbs. To take these out, you just twist them and pull them right on out, like so. And the bulb itself will pop right out. You just pull the bulb out and put the new bulb back in. So I don't think I can do that with one hand. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory though. You just grab the bulb and pull it out. Now if you're upgrading to LED, you're gonna have to worry about polarity with the incandescent you do not have to worry about polarity. You just put it in either way and it'll work. This is the old bulb and I can't really see the uh, filament too well. Well, there you go. Now you can. Look at how squiggly it is. That should be or was straight up and down in a point and now you can see just how much that has sagged. So this bulb is uh, very old. It's not quite burnt out yet. But I'm just going to replace it anyway because while I have all this taken out, I might as well just get to everything. Just replace it all at one time so I don't have to deal with this again. Alright, now that we have our new bulb taken out of the package, all you do is you push it back in. And once you get it back in, you just take this, you insert it back into... Uh-oh. Alright, as I was saying, you take the bulb, you insert it back in, you twist it to the right, it clicks, it's in. And if you want to test out, just pull this once. And you can see it's lit up. And if you're wondering how to find out which uh, little light is your turn signal, just go ahead and uh, put it in accessory mode. We can see the uh, little blinking, and we can just follow through. And you can see right there, it's blinking. So that let us know that that's the turn signal. And then down here, that one's also the turn signal. And you can just replace those by just simply pull it out. And this takes that little bulb. This is a 73. I'm using a 74 because again, 74 is just a little bit brighter and I'd rather use the little bit brighter of a bulb. If you want to, you uh, could go ahead and unplug the harnesses so you don't necessarily have to deal with uh, that but for me I don't like unplugging stuff unless I have to so I just leave it all plugged in I move it over to the side and I just replace what I need and then put everything back together again that way I don't have to kind of worry about snapping plastic connections because those little quick connect pieces where you have to pinch that little piece of plastic down and pull it out I've had a lot of other things in here I think this one's an example they crack you know, as you can see, that's cracked. So it still plugs in, it still stays, but it does not stay as well as it did when it was not cracked. So that's why I don't like having to unplug stuff unless I absolutely have to unplug stuff. All right, and to replace the little bulb for your temperature thing here, this bulb here just pops in right there and turn it over once you get it in there there we go it clicks in and we can um see where the other bulb goes in on the other side here so i went ahead and changed out the bulb and now let's uh put that back in place there we are that looks good And also, if you have a switch that, um, my switch here, it worked on low, low, medium, 
and then high medium didn't work and then high did work this little gray part right here you, you just unscrew the screw here it pops right out the little switch assembly can go bad this is a very common issue on Ford Econo lines their uh, switches will specifically this switch will burn out and you'll either get just high or just low or you'll lose functionality of the switch so you can go to AutoZone and just get a new part that's the uh, that's the number right there and I kept the old part in here this is the old switch this is the one that's broken and you can see in there how it's uh, it's melted which is pretty strange to see a switch start melting down like that um, I opened up the switch and yeah it's all melted inside I do not understand why these switches do that uh, but I hear so many people with Ford Econ lines and this plagued many year uh, models as well a lot of people have their switches burn out thankfully AutoZone makes a little part it costs $23.99 I believe all right and now that we have all the bulbs replaced now it's just time to put everything back together again it's basically the uh, opposite procedure of what we did to take everything apart so we're gonna just uh, I plug back up the little switch assembly to that and then we just fit that in place we grab our little bolt here and remember we got three of them one here one here and one here and we get those screwed in all right I went ahead and got these screwed in and now we just got to get the gauge cluster screwed back in and remember how we had to take that little um, gear selector indicator out well now we got to put it back in and it's pretty easy to put in you just line it up and push it right in and it'll pop right back in place once we do that we'll be able to completely slide the gauge cluster in back in place and you might have to reach a hand behind it and try to get some of the wires out of the way because they can get a little bit in the way whenever you try to uh, push this gauge cluster back in here and it has to seat on those four screw holes and then you screw those back in all right and now that we slid back in the little selector gear selector um, indicator if you notice that the little line is not falling properly on the one or the drive or neutral or reverse or park then you can actually adjust that I made a video on how to adjust the position of that little line to get it more in sync whenever you shift gears that way it's not too far to one side or too far to the other side I had mine before where I'd go to drive and it was basically right between the two and the D you know about like that and it always bothered me and I um realized that the fix for it was actually really easy and does not require this much work at all so I'll put a link to that video you can check out that video uh, if you want to tune up the little line and get that in sync to whatever gear you're actually in and again we'll just leave this down in one that way this is out of the way insert the, uh, the little piece back in here and then just work this into place and uh, it is pretty difficult to do everything with one hand so you're going to need to push the uh, little wire back in here as you work it in and that's going to be a two-handed job all right and now that the gauge cluster is back in place we just got to bolt it back on down again and like with most things automotive whenever you do screw back down these do not tighten them down too tight or you'll strip the threads because it's just plastic that's holding them in so be careful when you tighten everything down you don't want it to be loose once you tighten it down to where it's firm and now that we have the plastic trim piece back up all we got to do now is go ahead and plug back in our connections here and unfortunately the phone is still blurry this thing does not want to autofocus very well in video we got the uh, two outlets here to plug back up and once we get those plugged back up all we got to do is worry about getting uh, this little piece of metal here 
through this hole. So I like to work that just in there and then take your uh, other hand and grab this plastic piece and just lift it into place. And once you lift the plastic piece into place, then all you got to do is push it in. It's just a quick connect, so it literally will just snap right in. Just put a pretty even amount of force on it and you'll be able to feel it click in and if it, you're pushing and it's not clicking in you might need to bend it down a bit I know it's for the top you kind of need to push down and then in as you can see it pops right in now there's little rubber tabs on the back of this that I think it's a little light now to show you actually there's one on this side let me show you on that side all throughout the back of this panel here there's a little metal quick connect and then a little piece of rubber and it's generally right next to the quick connect whenever you pull this piece off make sure those little pieces of rubber don't fall off and get lost you want all of the little pieces of rubber because that keeps the plastic from squeaking and you also have this little um, felt lining here that might be ripped off as well so you want to go ahead and reposition the felt lining so whenever you push this all back into place those little rubber tabs are going to help keep the plastic from squeaking and just like that everything's in place now we didn't necessarily forget about the radio the radio does not want to come out very easily but to put it back in it just slides into place so all we have to do is connect the three connections and slide it right back into place all right and then prior to sliding the radio back into place make sure that you have thoroughly pushed in your antenna and we can just turn it to accessory mode turn on the radio you can locate the fastball much better yep it works so now that we know it works now we can go ahead and reinsert it if you turn on the radio and it doesn't turn on or you just have no am fm radio um, but the player itself works it could just be you didn't push in the antenna all the way you gotta give the antenna a pretty good amount of force to get it back in and you can see that little plastic piece there and you can see the little track it has to slide on so whenever you um, push the radio in it should go into place and be perfectly aligned on all four corners if it's not you're not on that track but if you push it down and then just push it back up it's just like putting a drawer you know inside of a dresser when you take it out put it back in it's basically the same concept just get it on the track once it's on the track it just snaps right into place and it stays there so that is uh, pretty much it we have almost completely put this back together we're just missing the little switch here for the light and this plastic panel so it's basically the exact opposite of what we did before now we just screw this piece in right here and again you don't need to tighten it too hard and for this little piece here we bent the metal having to pull it out so in order to push it back in to keep it to stay inside or to stay uh, hooked on to this little piece of metal here we need to bend the metal back out again basically do the opposite of what we did before and this is something that um i don't think i'll be able to do with one hand but essentially we're just going to hook the metal and we're going to just bend it just a little bit further out than it uh was before there we go and again we're just applying a little bit of force here we're not applying a lot and screw it on and when you can't rotate it and it feels firm that's when you know you got it in place and you just push it back on and now let's turn on the lights tugging on it reasonably hard yep it's nice and firm now we are not quite completely done yet we have the two little screws that go back up into here uh, which I've not yet screwed in but make sure you do that and now the last thing we have to do is take our plastic panel and again this is just a quick connect so let's go ahead and move the steering wheel up slide this panel back down and this panel just slides into place and then you pop it back in which uh, I'm not gonna pop in quite yet because I have a uh, 
some extra wires down here I gotta play around with. All right, so I turned the phone's flashlight off. That's on full brightness, and we can dim these down. As you can see, they're almost unrecognizably dim. Turn them back up, and wow, yep, that is um, that is a lot nicer than they were before. Let's go ahead and uh, put it into park. Put it in accessory mode and hit the turn signal. Okay. Well, that is all looking pretty good. Let's turn it back off again. And to adjust your clock on this particular uh, model unit here, you're going to hold down the clock button and use the tune and seek to adjust the time. So right now, the time is 8.54, and I should have gone backwards, but instead I'm uh, going all the way up to 54. And then use the seek to control the hour. There we go, and then just release the clock button, and it'll keep that time for you. And then that will be everything. You will have completely put everything back together again, and you will be good to go. So I hope this video helped you out in replacing your lights. If it did, uh, if you were able to get yours replaced, please let me know in the comments. It lets me know I'm uh, doing a good job with these videos. If you have any questions about Ford Econolines in general, I'm not so much related to just gauge cluster lights, but pretty much anything, feel free to ask in the comments. Uh, I don't know everything, but what I know might end up helping you out. So drop them in the comments. Uh, if you have any video suggestions, if you want to see me uh, work on something and do a video on it, again, just leave that in the comments. I am open to suggestions. Thank you very much for watching and have a great day.